all is well upon every rock and mountain. I think that's from our producer Joe as he uh, gave it a little uh, country gospel there as uh, Caroline and Richard are from Texas and uh, my daughter, if you all know, daughter, if you watch us on Facebook, you know our daughter Natalie rides a horse, and the horse name, is, the barn name is Texas, so we have a big connection with that. Uh, I think God's told us don't mess with Texas, so we're going to take that for what it is. Caroline, you are uh, a, a, you were raised in Orthodox in an Orthodox Jewish family, is that correct? Yeah, our synagogue was Orthodox, and you lived in the uh, Chicago area. Tell us a little bit real quick, how did you come to know Yeshua as your Messiah? Well, uh, after university, I was, a, I was a hippie and a New Ager, uh, and I was living down in Mexico, uh, singing and playing blues guitar in bars and cantinas, and one day I had a vision. I'd never had a vision before, but uh, in this vision I was uh, singing, and a host of angels was singing with me. I was playing the piano, and I looked up, and I saw Yeshua. And I knew instantly that he's the Lord. It was really a divine appointment. There's no other way to put it, because um, I was, in my home, I, I grew up uh, hearing the stories of the Holocaust and so forth, and I, I thought, you know, Christians hate the Jews, and they're your enemy, and stay away from them. And so for me to have a vision of Yeshua, of Jesus, that, that just blew me away. How, what was the reaction of your parents when you told them, by the way, I'm in Mexico, I had this vision, and I now believe that Yeshua is Messiah? Well, for one thing, I didn't tell anyone for four years. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, because I didn't know, I thought I was the only Jew in the world who believed. Right. So I didn't know who, who to talk to. And when I did finally tell my parents, they sent a lot of rabbis to talk to me, and it just, um, they basically cut me off because it, it was too much for them. Uh, now, what year was that approximately? Uh, 85. Okay, so your parents kind of not, didn't know what to do, they cut you off, but you kept your faith strong in that. Now, you have, uh, from, you know, you tell us you play guitar, I know you have a beautiful voice, you started leading worship. In fact, you, how many CDs do you have out right now? We have five worship CDs. Um, some of the best of is an early one. Uh, actually, it's a compilation of two earlier uh, cassettes. Uh, wow, back in the days of the dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, you're only 27, so you're, you're doing really good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true, true, you got it. Um, and then we have He Will Appear. And those first two CDs are full of... Uh, congregational worship CDs that are actually being done by a lot of uh, Messianic congregations in America. And then uh, we have Fine Linen, which I like to call worship with a touch of the blues. <laughs> um, and then we have The Ladder Rain, which is more contemporary worship. And then the newest one is Deep Calls to Deep, uh, which in Hebrew we would say it's Mamash Ravua. It's, it's really calm music. It, it's... Uh, Great CD for intercessors. Great, and I, I was listening to your music just the other day. It's beautiful. Now, if they, if a person wants to get a copy of it or hear it, they can go to your website, heartofg-d.org. Again, they can go to right to rabbiscott.com too. We have that on our link page. But check that out. Beautiful music. I know you'll be touched by it. Now, you, you, Carolyn, you have a unique ministry in that you really uh, are reaching out to the Jewish community in Israel, but I want you to share a little bit about the story of y'all being in Germany, especially the fact here you are raised in an Orthodox uh, synagogue. You've been taught to really uh, all your life, as many of us were taught, hate the Germans because of what they did. I remember for years and years and years growing up, my father would never have a German car because uh, of what the Germans you know, did to us, yeah. and yet God I brings you the to the land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you kind of in a nutshell. Um, we, uh, I guess it was in 98, the Lord called us to Europe um, just to go traveling and ministering in different places. And uh, when we were in Germany, uh, uh, there was a church that invited us, but they actually made a picnic for us out on the land. And during the worship, I could hear the blood crying out from the land. 
the blood of my Jewish people, and it was crying vengeance. And at the same time, I could hear God speaking, and he was saying, I want you to forgive because the German Christians have made true repentance. And, you know, I didn't understand how this worked or anything, and I, I'm surprised I didn't just uh, kill the spirit right there. But um, I said, you know, I told the people what I was hearing, and I said, as a Jewish believer in Messiah, I forgive you. And then we saw the people just not only cry, but they were like weeping and moaning for a long time. And then we went back to Texas, because that's where our lives were. And uh, then I began to have dreams and visions. And the Lord said, move to Munich. And it was two years. We were like Jonah. We kept trying to run away from God. He kept trying to call us back. And uh, finally, after two years, God won. We moved to Germany. And uh, there, we, we didn't really know what he had in store for us, but he opened a way for us to minister in German public schools. And we still do this today. We go into the schools and we teach on Jewish life and culture, but we do it through the life of the greatest Jew who ever lived. Yeshua, and we do some Israeli dancing, and uh, you know, write the names of the kids on the board in Hebrew, things like this. Just give them a taste, you know. And then I share with the kids what it was like as a Jew being called to live in Germany, and all the hatred, and how God used the love of German Christians to heal my heart. And then I share with the kids what it was like living there, and how the Lord spoke to me about Germany that it has a double curse on it. And the first curse was put there because of what the Nazis did to me and my people. You know, Genesis 12:3 is a, is a spiritual principle. I'll right. bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you, the Lord says. And um, the second curse was put on Germany by me and my people. We, we have truly cursed Germany. And so I ask these kids who are, you know, teenagers, uh, and they weren't even born in the time of the Holocaust, and yet they carried the burden of the, the guilt of their forefathers. And so I ask these kids to forgive me for putting a curse on them. And when they hear this, I think they realize, you know, we didn't come to shove Jesus down their throats. You know, They're, this is the message of the gospel, love and forgiveness. And uh, I also tell them something else from the Torah. God says, I will punish the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. And we tell the kids, that's you. You're the third, third and fourth generation since the Nazi side. And when they hear this, and we tell them, you're the curse breakers in your land. But if you want to break the curse in the land, you have to break it over your own lives right. first. And the way to do that is putting the blood of the lamb over the doorpost of your house uh, you know, over the doorposts of your heart, <laughs> we tie it in with the Passover. Right. And then the angel of death, eternal separation from God, passes over, and you have the gift of eternal life. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. You told us a story that you uh, also believed that the there would be groups of uh, German kids coming to Israel to minister. And I love the story that you shared with that your daughter is on a kibbutz. And she saw this whole group of, uh, of German students there, and they were sharing the gospel. And she came up to them, and uh, she started talking to them. And she said that, um, she said, hey, why are you all here? And they said that uh, a couple came to our high school and shared about the love of Israel, and it was y'all. So uh, it was amazing how God was using that uh, in such a mighty way. We've yeah, we've got about a minute left. I want to ask you really quick, just to summarize up, what right now, how do you see the spiritual uh, climate in Israel right now? We've got about a minute left. Um, basically, what's happening is it's like what Yeshua described in Matthew 24, when he says that his return is imminent, and then he kind of switches gears and starts speaking about the fig tree. To learn this lesson from the fig tree, when it, it begins to put out shoots and it, it's coming tender. That's the state that Israel is in right now. There is a hunger for, not for religion, not for religious acts, but there's a hunger for something real. And Yeshua is real. And his, his kingdom is real. And people want to know, you know, what do you have? You have something that I don't have. And so there, I think also the Jewish believers in Israel were like reaching a critical mass. You know, we're speaking Hebrew, we're living in the land, we're, we're home. 
That's um, a, yeah, it's an amazing story. And, and right now we got to finish up and wrap up the show right now. I want to encourage you, as we always do each week, this is Rabbi Scott and Judy saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.